we saw DC's latest superhero film, Aquaman. Yes, Aquaman. Aquaman, <laughs> sure. Anyway, so DC has had a pattern. You've noticed this. It's that the solo hero movies tend to be, for the most part, fine. And that the team-ups are the ones they have trouble with. Mm-hmm. And since we're the only two people on Earth who like Man of Steel, this movie has made them three for three on t- on uh, solo hero movies. That it has. Uh, and it has been, I-, I guess for lack of a... Well, if we're talking extremes, let's just call it 0 for 3 on team movies. Mm-hmm. So... What made you, what made this work? Uh, I would say, what made it work? I would say the world. Uh, if there's anything about this, well, the world and James Wan paired with it. Uh, shout out to James Wan, man. Like, the guy knows how to make an action movie, and the guy knows how to make a, a a movie with fantastical shit, and he knows how to make it seem real. Uh, be that you know, kind of in a in a existential way or in a visual way, right? Like. His like this is probably the best uh, uh, this is the best Atlantis I've seen in a movie. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, like I haven't seen the Atlantis: The Lost Empire in a while, but like this is far more expansive than any Atlantis. Yeah. In addition to being probably, I, I you know, I guess I'd agree with you. It's probably the best depiction I've seen. But right. It, it's the biggest. And the I mean, there's just so much on a on a technical standpoint of this movie that works. The, the effects, be it visual or artificial or practical, uh, the, what do you call it, the, uh, the fighting, the choreography, the set piece work, the, the set design work, the costume design work. Um, yeah, that's that was something that really stood out to me was the, particularly the costume design was unreal. Especially, like, they made it accurate to the comics without making it, at least for me, seem silly. Yeah. Like, they had that, I mean, that fucking suit on the poster for Aquaman. It's like, that's the suit, but it's, like, not matte. It's, like, armor, like, plating. Like, looks like mail. Oh, it's so fucking cool. Uh, but there's that, and I would say, aside from that, uh, Jason Momoa. Yeah. Like, this guy's just, like, a likable dude, and I would see him in anything. Yeah, he, he's he got one of those, those good action star personalities. Yeah. He he just kind of fits into the role, and he's not trying too hard to take it too seriously. You can tell he's having fun. Yeah, he loves now, his I, character. I think that's important with action roles. Obviously, mm-hmm. he's a guy where I'm glad. I look at the box office numbers that this movie is making, and I'm like, you know what? Good for you. I'm like, you deserve this because you're a good guy. Like you've been relegated to just like playing big dumb like baddies or like big like you know stupid like ogre people for like your entire career and it's like now you get to be the fucking hero and you get to show everybody like nah man i just want to kick some ass and and be the good guy this time and he does and he he's very heroic i buy him as arthur curry yeah i do too he pretty much fits the role perfectly he really does there's not a whole lot really i mean aquaman let's be real it's not really that hard of a character to begin with Mm -hmm. but he he does what he can to make it a sort of a I don't know, like have more personality. Right. Yeah, and I I thought that it was an interesting interpretation because normally the Aquaman that I grew up with was the Aquaman who was more... He's he's almost like too stoic sometimes. Yeah, or the the Aquaman who's more accustomed to undersea life, like the Justice League Aquaman who's like, fuck land people, you know? Yeah. And like this uh, Aquaman is like, no, man, like I grew up on land, you know? Like me and my dad were real cool and... Right. It was interesting to see that interpretation of, like, the Arthur Curry who's unaware of the Atlantean, you know, whole spiel. Right. So that was interesting, and I, I really liked all, I mean, all the Atlantis stuff was great. Like, I loved okay. Volko, I loved Mara, I loved the politics and seeing, like, yeah. fucking what's-his-name Orm, like, being a piece of shit and, like, using, like... That was almost something I thought I, I had kind of had a problem with. What's that? I feel like Patrick Wilson was just doing a way better job than everyone else. Really? Yes. Oh man, I thought he, he, he was w- taking it like he was t- he was taking it that role and he took it I don't want to say too seriously, but I feel like people weren't matching him. I feel like I felt like there there was a few it felt like it felt like what's her name in Power Rangers? Uh, uh Elizabeth Banks. 
It felt like Rita Repulsa. No, I would say it's like the opposite. She was cheesing it up there. See, I thought he was cheesing it up a little bit. Like with some of like when he was addressing the crowd. Yeah. He was like, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, man. You know, you know what? Point taken. I was like, Patrick, okay, uh, that's a good take. Uh next time, let's do it. Let's let's do that as if you were a person. Let, let's yeah, it's like let's not <laughs> try and imitate the the eighties hit song Tarzan Boy. <laughs> Yeah, the fucking. That, when I always hear that song, I think of fucking uh, Chris Farley when they're on the palm trees and Beverly uh, Hills Ninja. Well, I, I'm gonna have to disagree with you and say that I think of the classic uh, Ninja Turtles three. Oh yeah, that too. Okay, but back to Aquaman. <laughs> but yeah, Patrick Wilson. I mean, it cracked me up. You know, no, it's, but I, it's not I, supposed to be taken seriously. I no, I think. get that, but and yes, you you know. Point taken about the 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 George of the Jungle yell, <laughs> but other than that, I felt like there there was times where I heard people say lines, and I'm it sort of took me out of it, and I thought, yeah, this is this is definitely fantasy, yeah. def- definitely fake as shit. <laughs> there's I mean, it's some. awesome, but there's some lines where I'm just I'm I'm not buying that. You know, and I guess some of the lines are kind of hard. To, that's the one thing I'll give them. You know some leeway on i feel like lines for this movie would be really hard to deliver yeah because some of them this is it's like it's essentially if we're talking ridiculous levels what's what's probably the most fantastical uh marvel movie probably thor probably thor. because of asgard mm, thor or like doctor strange or guardians ish not even doctor strange because you can just kind of copy the template of harry potter and it, yeah yeah you know Mm-hmm. And plus, Doctor Strange is such a counterpoint to everything they do. Yeah, he's he's he, the Scott Calvin in that world, if you will. Yes, he he is the. That's what I mean. He's sort of the the like the way he views the world is sort of the antithesis of the way they view it. Yeah, he's like the audience. Yeah, exactly. And this kind of didn't have that. Mm-hmm. And I think that was. That was like a minor problem I had mm-hmm. because it's basically like this is Thor underwater, pretty much. So you, this is about as ridiculous as it gets. Yep. So I thought they could have used a little more counterpoint here or there, mm-hmm. if if we're talking a little bit of the negatives. Yeah, and I it it gets super silly, and I yeah, like there's one line in the beginning, like th- there's some mirror lines where it's like you have to get the. The, the golden goblet of hell. And yeah. I'm like, uh, just, just do something else. I'm not buying this part. The, the scene in the beginning, and this isn't a spoiler, it, yeah. it involves Black Manta's origin. Yeah. Black Manta and his dad. And like, there's two lines in there where I'm like, oh man. And I was laughing. Like, it was, it's cheesy as hell and bad. But like, I was like, I think they're, I think they're self-aware. I'm like, now, Robert, remember, the man directed... Furious Seven. So okay. Like, okay. So I think he's playing with this a little bit, but like the one line where he's like, uh, he's talking to his dad, and like yeah. the dad, uh, Black Manta's dad, is like, "You gotta go up there and kill that son of a bitch." And then yeah. like, but that, that was a very fast and furious line. And then like his dad's like telling him to go away and like go yeah. without him, and like Black Manta's like, "Damn you!" And I'm like, "Oh man, <laughs> this fucking movie is so it's, it's this is great." <laughs> yeah, but see, what I'm saying is other lines, aside from those lines, mm-hmm. it, the self-awareness, I wasn't really sure. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? It, it wasn't as obvious as a Fast and the Furious, and there wasn't, not that not that they need to make it full-blown comedy, but a little, like, a little self, like, obvious self-awareness could have helped. I felt like the comedy, I felt like the movie was funniest when it, it didn't seem like it knew it was being funny, and it was its least funniest when it was trying to be funny. Yeah, see, that, that's what I mean. I'm saying they could have used a tiny little punch up mm-hmm. uh, on the, the comedy bits. Agreed. So, uh, fuck it, you just want to do spoilers? Yeah, let's go ahead. I'm, I'm done. So, firstly, uh, holy visual effects, Batman. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Ooh. As soon as that, like, as soon as that, like, Atlantean guy breaks through the wall into Arthur Curry's dad's house and they throw down with Nicole Kidman. I'm like, oh, okay. So this is <laughs> this how is it's going to be. This is what it's going to be like. And it is pretty much like, that was the other thing I really liked is like, it, 
kind of, I don't know if you felt the same way because some people, I guess, disagreed. I'm like, I was never really bored. It was like, there's a lot of action in this movie. There's a lot. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree only slightly. There's a couple moments where I thought the pacing was a little long. I think they, they could have cut out maybe, ah, uh, hate saying this, but maybe 10 minutes. No, I don't blame you. Because I, I hate this notion where I feel like when people are making a blockbuster movie now, well, no one goes to the movie theaters anymore, so we better make it a little longer so it's worth their while. Mm-hmm. So two minutes, 15 seems to be, or rather, sorry, two hours, 15 minutes seems to be the targeted time that a lot of these studios are aiming for when they make these big blockbuster movies. But you, but if you just have an hour 50 of ideas or, or just two flat hours, what's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. I, I kind of dislike this notion that there ha- it has to be longer than necessary. Mm-hmm. And there's there's a couple scenes, actually, even action scenes that I kind of felt, or not action scenes, but scenes where stuff were happening that I thought could have either been cut or shorter. Mm-hmm. So there were some dialogue parts where they'd be explaining some you know, trinket or treasure item that they need to collect. And then they'd start explaining it, and I'm just sitting there like, I don't care. It's like the... The Okama Game Sphere episode of South Park. Mm-hmm. I know you boys w- want your Game Sphere back, but first I'm going to kill you. But before I do, I'm going to reveal to you my plan. And then Stan <laughs> and all of them just say, dude, we don't care. <laughs> so- I-, I had a little bit of that where I can't. Y- you know when they go to the desert? Yeah. The whole yeah. scene was completely pointless. Yeah. We need to go to the desert to find this thing. Mm-hmm. And then what do you get when you get to the, the thing? They tell you to go somewhere else. Yeah. What the hell is this? Oh, the princess is in another castle. Yeah, yeah. This is stupid. This isn't Mario. Mm-hmm. You have to play all the levels. Right. You know, and all the levels are fun. Yeah, yeah. That scene was, I don't even know. That That's like a, a filler. It, it's a filler scene. It mm-hmm. just, it didn't feel necessary. Yeah, yeah. I liked, uh, it, it's kind of a mishmash of a lot of different things. It's like kind of an Indiana Jones movie, but also yeah, well, Thor and see, a couple other things. That's my, that's what I'm saying is. It, I think it it uh, it extended its reach a bit too far on the Indiana Jones at that part. Mm-hmm. Also, I guess I'll just pile on my negatives while I'm at it. There, there's not a whole lot, and none none of these are giant detractors. I'd say the biggest one is probably the the Morocco scene, just because that's a whole scene of the movie and it's decently long. And They're in Morocco in the desert? Well, that's where they filmed it. Oh, okay. Point is, the desert scene was dumb and mm-hmm. it wasn't that good and it didn't add anything. Mm-hmm. Um oh, also. Th- this was a shorter scene thankfully, but there's about a minute and a half where I kind of wanted to barf. What's that? The the whole we're falling in love montage. <laughs> oh man, was that 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 was I'm not lying that that was bad. That that was Straight up not good. She's eating the flowers? Yeah. I thought... Uh, what, it was kind of one of those things where me, it's. I was thinking to myself, Alex, don't think too hard. Mm-hmm. But it was one of those things where it made me think, well, hold on. How much do they know about the surface? I thought they know something. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought they'd know not to eat flowers. <laughs> I don't know. Again, maybe that's just me being nitpicky, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm a... The thing that I... I, I stomp my foot down in objection to mm-hmm. is just the whole God. What's that guy who makes all those horrible rom com movies? Cameron Crowe. Yeah, yeah. It just felt like one of those movies. Mm-hmm. This summer, Mira and Arthur. <laughs> it was just I hated that whole scene. Mm-hmm. Luckily, it was not. It was maybe a minute and a half. And it's followed up with right. A it's really, followed really, up by probably of, well, maybe one of the best. Action scenes in the movie. Well, best action scene on land. Yes, on land it is. Yeah, it's followed up by a great action scene. It was, it was just such a welcome interruption. Mm-hmm. I thought, finally, just punch it now. How about that part in the action scene, by the way, where the dude's just like running through walls? He's like running yeah. through like 50 walls. <laughs> God, I love that. Imagine pitching that as James Bond be like, all right, so there's going to be a scene so where here's the dude's a storyboard. Just running. It's like, <laughs> is this 50 drawings of the same thing? No, they're different houses. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, God, that's that was awesome. cool. Um, real quick though, before we continue that, mm-hmm. I just wasn't buying the Arthur Mira like love story at all. Yeah, it wasn't personally. I, I agree. I didn't, I didn't find it personally interesting. 
it, it was very 1940s. Ooh, I don't like you now, but you'll like me eventually, see? Yeah. I'm the male lead, see? Yeah. yeah, I'm the male lead, and maybe you don't like me, but eventually you'll grow to love my quirks. Ooh, I don't like you, but I am growing to love your quirks. Yeah, see? Told ya. <laughs> yeah. No, there weren't... I, I liked both of them individually. It's just like... Yeah, them, no, them that's together, what I'm saying. It's, like, it's kind of how I felt about, like... How I feel about Scott Lang and yes. Hope Van Dyne. It, it, it's like I was no. gonna say it's very <laughs> similar. I'm not feeling it. Second movie, a little bit, but a little bit more, but still, still like, nah. not, not really. Yeah, nah. I don't know. I thought they maybe could have, they maybe could have left that open, you mm-hmm. know, for the m- sequel. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Come on, guys, play the TV game. Right? Will they or won't they? They do leave a lot open for the sequel in this, and that it's like... Well, that the Black Manta just disappears halfway through the movie. Well, Black Manta disappears, but then he's found. Yeah. And no, then... Not that I not that I really even minded that, because... Um, we know we're getting more. Yeah, we know we're getting like, more Like, they're Black not going to do that to Black Black Manta. Like, he's, he's like Aquaman's second most important... He's like his Two-Face. It's like, they're not going to... Well, they killed Two-Face in the Dark Knight, but still... Well, I, I anyway, what you're saying. It's like, they're not going to do that to the guy. Okay. But, like, even Orm is, like, not dead by the end of the movie. Yeah. I'm like, huh. But, okay. What are they going to do with Orm? So... Interesting. Now, now that... I think I've gotten all the negatives out of the way. Mm-hmm. Most of them are not huge detractors. Okay, but now we'll move on to positives. Holy shit, the action. Mm-hmm. Some of the regular fights were were good, but not amazing. But the underwater battle sequences? <laughs> Jesus. How about that underwater, that ending under, underwater war? Whew, okay. Marvel, DC, Image, Valiant, whoever the hell has movie deals. <laughs> Third acts. Take notes. Yeah. <laughs> Aquaman. You have holy Christ. First How many all, climaxes? Jesus. Okay. First Aquaman th- gets the suit. Yeah. Aquaman f- there's a battle. Aquaman's in the battle. There's a Kraken. There's another fight. <laughs> you you know is you know is the most uh over the top action y action movie moment ever hmm. when Ocean Master and Aquaman are swimming at each other, but they have to kill all the shit on the way there. <laughs> it's like cut to Aquaman. Nah, get out of my way. Nah, hey fella, I got, I got a battle. I got a, I got a fella over there to fight. Yeah. Cut to Ocean Master. Nah, see, out of my way. I gotta meet that Aquaman fella. Nah, just punching and killing all these. What the fuck are they? Like giant shrimp or something? Yeah, <laughs> whatever they are. Krill or whatever the fuck. Yeah, some shit. The, the trench. Yeah, yeah, the trench. Those monsters or whatever. Crab men. Yeah. So they, they're they both on the way to each other, just slicing and dicing. And then what do they do? No, no, no. Let's get on top of a submarine and have a lethal weapon style, pointless one-on-one battle that doesn't entirely make sense, but is awesome anyway. And everybody's going to stop and watch. Yeah. They're going to come up from the ocean and watch. Yeah. <laughs> God, that was great. Got some guys... You know, screaming like like it's a like it's one of those like underground rings, just like throwing random weapons and shit. No, like no, I'm talking about like in like blood sport. Like, oh, you know, all the, throwing shit! All the at dudes him. are just screaming at each other, like holding wads of cash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, third act though. You want to know what's like super impressive about the third act? Hmm. While I was watching some of the underwater battle sequences, which by the way were fantastic, as we've mentioned, but during the big one. I decided to pay extra close attention. I thought, you know, I'm going to pay attention to things in the background, the middle ground, and the foreground, just to see how detailed this animation is. At any given time, there's about 20 different moving pieces. Mm-hmm. So there could be the main two monsters, like a seahorse man is fighting a, a <laughs> giant crab. Right. And then in the way back, there's a ship. But if you pay close attention, it's not just, it's not like when extras just kind of half heartedly just. Perry, Perry, thrust, thrust. Like, yeah. you know how that is. Like, a lot of times, if you pay too close attention to the background, it looks lazy. Mm-hmm. The background in this, everyone's doing very specific stuff. Mm-hmm. In the middle, so you have the seahorse fighting the crab, but in the very background, a ship will be chasing, you know, a couple loose swimming dudes, but it'll do like a loop de loop and a barrel roll to chase them. It's very specific. The whole shot is impressive. Mm-hmm. It's it felt like a comic book panel. Yeah, it's unbelievable mm-hmm. the amount of 
work the visual effects people put in this. Yeah. And what's even more impressive is this had a relatively smaller budget yeah, for no, a movie this ambitious. 160 to 200, which is a lot, but that's like, that's well, peanuts compared to the 250 plus that in, uh, Infinity War was, right? Well, I bet it. Wasn't it 400? I arguably? bet you it's more. I mean, Jesus. That's what I'm saying. 160 to 200? The fact that the 160 is even possible. The low end? Yeah. Fuck. That's a lot. That's that's, that's not what a lot I'm of saying. money it, for what this pulled off. It's amazing that this didn't cost twice what Avatar did. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's a couple spots where some of the CGI is just a tiny bit spotty, mm-hmm. but where it really, really counts, looks amazing. And honestly, this is going to sound weird, but kind of like how I felt about Mad Max Fury Road and that I thought the cars were the real stars, mm-hmm. the visual effects artists. Hats off to them. Yeah. Like, this movie wouldn't work without them. Not only would it not work, but they're the real stars in a weird way. Mm -hmm. They they made this completely fantastic looking. You want to talk about production design altogether. Costumes, also another very important element. Costumes, visual effects, set design, production design. The whole look of this world was unbelievable. The vision, man. I, I yeah. got I got to applaud James Wan here for starting off as the guy who directed Saw, you know, this low budget indie-ish horror movie, to going from that to ma- being the guy who made fucking Furious Seven and making Aquaman, like two of like the more like better action oriented movies I've seen in a while. Yeah, like that is that's pretty crazy, and it's there's definitely some yeah. James Wan stamps on this. Like there's a lot of like weird camera tilting and like camera like circling around action scenes type oh stuff. yeah and I'm like god this is just holy shit an action movie where you get a wide shot of people punching each other yeah and, and like a, you can see every how about move. you get a wide shot of great white sharks charging at seahorses yeah <laughs> i gotta say exactly. as a huge dork when it comes to loving like oceanic creatures and stuff and mm-hmm. just being obsessed with sharks and shit this was my kind of movie because mm-hmm. You had every type of oceanic animal imaginable in this. Mm -hmm. You had the giant seahorses. You had crab monsters. You had like weird sort of, what the fuck were they? The ones that were afraid of the fire. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those were cool. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Frog monsters, whatever the hell. (laughs) Amphibious creatures. Yeah. you, You had every type of creature. Sharks and... Uh, the big Kraken thing, mm-hmm. who you said was voiced by Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews. None other than Julie Andrews is in this. Yeah. That is wacky, man. But you also get some Randall Park in this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Steven Shin. <laughs> Dude, Randall Park. Come on, guys. We need to get that guy more work. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's a funny dude. The he's hell? really fantastic in everything he's in. Yeah. Oh, man. This is he yeah was, yeah he was funny as hell in this yeah and I'm hoping he'll be more uh, he'll be more utilized in the sequel yeah what do you think about the sequel uh, if if it when it happens because it'll happen well I I can tell you this because I enjoyed Atlantis so much mm-hmm. and just the whole underwater thing and all the, all the way this looks which to me honestly the the cosmetic side of, for lack of a better word is. It's pretty important with superhero movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought the story could have been a little tighter. Maybe the acting wasn't perfect in places, but those were so far outweighed by how good the the action side of things were in this. Uh, Fuck, man. You you could kind of pull a Home Alone on me, and I wouldn't care. And by that, I mean do basically the exact same thing again, but just have it be good again, and I won't really give a shit. Yeah, I for me I think this reminds me a lot of like a Black Panther one or like a, like a well maybe not a Batman Begins so much but it's like this was good enough and I but it left enough of a gap for me to be like all right I can't wait to see how you follow this up because there is room for you to get better or like a John Wick one you know where it's like that was yeah. really really good but Let's see what else you got. You know, like, yeah. you've left enough room for yourself to top yourself. Oh, also, Jaiman Hansu. Yeah. Gets killed real, right quick. That sucked, man. I was real excited, and <laughs> then he's just barely in it. Well, we'll see him in Shazam. Okay. All right. 
double dipping in the DCEU. Yeah, weird. I was yeah. glad to see him. I, I like that dude and everything he's in. Yeah, man, I felt bad. Yeah, he, Orm's he, a piece of shit. Yeah. What an asshole. Yeah, what a, what a, what a jerk. That's, that's Orm's problem. He's a jerk. So the next movie is probably, they left it open for Black Mana. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have different creatures, and Black Mana's the main baddie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just don't think, but how's this going to be, how's that going to be bigger? I don't know if it'll be bigger so much as maybe it'll just be, I think it could be better. I think it, if you if you that, no, really I fine tune the the story and yeah. the comedy, I think, and you make oh man, I could use some more pugilism. I want to see an even even more like dope because that that fight scene between Manta and, and Aquaman is good, but like that motherfucker doesn't stand a chance against Arthur. Like he even gets his shit pushed in yeah like, pretty quick. He gets like thrown off a cliff and fucked up bad. <laughs> <laughs> but like it's good. I just I want to see some more. That was what it was interesting too. Is it seems like there's always a, like a how would you put it a, a in their in their civvies fight scene. Yeah, yeah. Because like uh, Winter Soldier had that on the freeway. Mm-hmm. Black Panther had it in the casino in Korea, mm-hmm. and this had it in the Italy thing. Yeah. Thankfully, right in the nick of the time, where I was just about to had enough of that <laughs> horrible attempt at romance shit. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, uh, we're eating roses, because get it? We're, we're dumb? What, are you also going to, like, lick toilet seats because you don't know what they're used for? Like, I, I was just, I was getting annoyed, okay? Almost. That guy put his head in a toilet bowl. Remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. That was, uh, wasn't that none other than Luddy Lynn? I think it was him. The Black Ranger I from guess the uh, Power, Rangers. Power Rangers reboot, which uh, didn't work out. No, but no, it wasn't yeah. bad. It was okay. All right, whatever. You got any other... Any other tidbits, comments, qualms, questions? That scene where Black Manta's chilling on the top of his boat and those dudes come up and, like, Orm is, like, bubble version of Orm talking to him. How fucking cool did that scene look? Like, the water's, like, pink and shit. Remember that? It's like all Aurora, it's like all Aurora Borealis-like. It's the scene where you find out that Orm is paying Black Manta to make it look like the humans are shitbags. Oh, yeah, yeah. God, I love that scene. I'm like, this is just, like color oh fuck it looks so good <laughs> you know what i also thought too i kind of like that his his motivation is pretty simple well he's, he's wanting to invade he, he wanted to invade you know and what? he's like i don't like my mom yeah. fuck aquaman yeah like, he's you know he's the 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 true king no fuck that yeah where was he you, you know what that thing is you know what this movie didn't have which hmm. almost all superhero movies have hmm it didn't have the the stereotypical doomsday device. No, and it's not that that's always bad. It's just it is overused. Mm-hmm. This is no fuck fuck that. I'm not trying to to set off the one end all be all bomb or thing that turns you into mutants or whatever the hell. Mm-hmm. I, I just I just want to invade. Mm-hmm. Fuck them. I want to invade. Right. And I I honestly I thought that made it kind of more enjoyable. It was just nice to see. You know. Yeah. I just I just want conquest. Yeah. It was pretty simple. I definitely got Orm. I yeah. definitely got him. But He's just a conniving little bastard. He's a little brother, man. He's yeah. got little man's disease. He's got little brother syndrome. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Nicole Kidman. Real good. Oh, yeah. how, about, how about some Timuera Morrison, man? Fucking Django what? Fett. Django Fett as... Yeah, as, as uh, uh, Thomas Curry, Arthur's dad. Yeah. I, I was a big fan. Yeah, it's good to see him getting some work again. But what's the name of the dude who played Black Manta? Uh, Yahya Abdul Mateen the second. Okay, he was good. I the only uh, yeah, other I was thing a bit, I've I was a big fan in. of him, and it, it was one of those things where it's like I kind of wish I saw more of him, but at the same time I understand why we didn't because if if the, I mean it was already in my opinion a little too long mm-hmm. and. The way they had him in, it's like they had him enough so that he wasn't completely shoehorned. Like, he served a purpose, and then I guess they just kind of made him go away. But we'll be back! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I think I definitely back. liked him in the role, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more of him. He's definitely Black Manta. Well, that's the other thing, is he's always kind of, you know... He's one of the few villains where you can sort of sympathize. Mm-hmm. And that, again, that's kind of I like those characters, like especially Magneto's like that. Where oh yeah, 
Like, you can see his point of view. He's like, I'm sick of being feared and hated. And it's like, yeah, that is pretty shitty. And then... Tragic backstory, man. Right. That, that I like when villains have a dimension of gray to them. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that covers the villains. Who else was in? Dolph Lundgren, man. Dolph Lundgren. Good stuff. I mean, everybody is a supporting role. Like, Willem Dafoe is Volko. Good yeah, he mentor. Was, he was fine. Yeah, Dolph Lundgren is Narius. Uh, Nicole Kidman, we mentioned. Uh, yeah, everybody right. else is good. Okay, so I guess you got anything else? No, I think I'm All right. good. So now we'll move on to scores. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you got? So, this is going to sound a little bit lower than you'd think I'd give. All right. But keep in mind the company we're dealing with here. Okay. I'd probably give this a seven. Oh, make me but sick. But here's the deal. I know, like, you'd say, like, well, Robert, you've been dealing with sevens the whole year. Isn't that a problem? Isn't that, isn't that like, mediocre? I'm like, no. I, I think I only needed this movie to be as good as a seven. Because, like, you got to understand, like, what people think Aquaman is. And, like, people think Aquaman's stupid. And yeah. this movie's very silly, yes. But it's making $600 million, and it was watchable and fun. And you know what? But that's because uh, China probably thought it was about a mermaid. Yeah, no, it, well, <laughs> sort of semi is. No, because it was, was the Stephen Chow made the movie Mermaid, right? Yeah, yeah. But this movie is making bank in China, though. Keep in mind that this is the uh, third highest rated DCEU movie I've ever seen. So, like, when I say it's, like, seven is medi like, for people to think, like, seven is mediocre, it's like, no, seven's pretty fucking good. Like, for DCEU, it's pretty good. But, okay. Well, I mean, I have some issues. It's very silly. It's a little too long. And it's, uh, I could have, some of the, some of the acting and lines and dialogue. Yeah, yeah, and like, definitely, uh, like, <laughs> it was spotty. Yeah. But, I again... I'm not going to not see Aquaman 2. That's why I'm like, yeah. you know what? Yeah, this is a good start. Let's see what yeah. else you got. Okay. So. All right. I'm, I'm going to, I guess I'm not going much higher, mm-hmm. but I'm giving this a four out of five. Yeah. I'm about, I'm there-ish. Because I, I have the same reasons. My main reason being there are scenes that need to be cut. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the B story. The, again, there was just certain lines that were spotty like so it was Mira, it was so weird. There's times where I'm like, I'm believing this character, and there's times where she was just saying shit, and I'm like, I thought that is just silly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought I, I would even say Volko had that problem at times. Like mm-hmm. there are some, because I know Willem Dafoe is a good actor. There's some lines I could see the grimace in his face, just struggling to say. It's like <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, this is, uh, what is this, a fork? What the fuck is this? <laughs> uh. Also, like the use of tridents. But, again, those little detractors, uh, holy shit, that third act. Yeah, yeah. That, that That's how you do a third act battle scene. Mm-hmm. I think that's, man, that was just uh, entirely more impressive than I ever would have imagined. So with its impressive third act and an overall pretty impressive movie, we f- give it our final combined score of 11 out of 15. 